Okay, so we go ahead. All good? Yep. All right. Hey, thanks for everyone's patience. Uh, welcome to the Town of Pompey Planning Board meeting. Today is September 20th, 2021. What a beautiful day it was outside. So, mm -hmm. Enjoy it while it's here. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here are uh, meeting minutes from August 16th. Um, we had a couple revisions. I know that were revised today. Yeah. Um, do our board members have any other revisions? If not, make a motion to accept as revised. I second the motion. Kevin seconds. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, with that, I guess real quickly uh, introduce myself. I'm Sue Smith, Chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, to my far right, Kevin Corson, Don Shaheen, our Board Secretary, uh, yeah, Mary Beth Pizarras. <laughs> there you go. Second month with us. So. Uh, Dan Bargabas and Roy Smith, um, Carl. Aaron Krug. Aaron Krug is not here yet. I haven't heard if he's going to be coming. Our um, attorney, Jamie Sutphin, our town engineer, Steve Snell, and our code enforcement officer, Tim Gainey. Um, thanks to Veronica for the uh, technological guru over there. And uh, Renee Rotundo, our supervisor, is hiding <laughs> out in the back. So. She's ordering a ladder on Amazon right now. <laughs> Okay, first on our agenda this evening, um, F. Beecher Graham uh, on schedule tonight is a public hearing for 4006 Orange Gulf Road, tax parcel number 007.02 uh, 29 for a two lot subdivision. Um, these have been paid. The Requirement of notification via certified mail has been taken place. Uh, Beecher, come on up. And I guess um, for those here before we enter into the public hearing, if you want to uh, any other changes, you guys get. No, but I had a question. David. You mentioned the property you're spinning off. The larger piece. The larger piece. You were going to do something to preserve it. Hopefully, I, I haven't done anything, made any steps yet, but um, I don't want to. Like a forever wild sort of like thing. That. Yes. Okay. I don't want to. I have no intentions of developing it. Okay. So. That's... Okay. And I just the only reason I ask is I remember you mentioning that, and I didn't know if that's something we should enter into the <laughs> record. So that's. Mm -hmm. It was referred to. In the it was referred to. Yeah. Yeah. I just would what like would, it that what way. Would that, what would that mean? 30 years from now, when someone wants to develop it, it would be in the record that your wishes were to maintain it as forever wild or whatever. That's the only reason I asked. Okay. Well, I think if I, if I, if that happens, that the, I mean, I wouldn't be in control of that. I would turn it over to a trust and have that. They would correct. Work. Mm -hmm. So that um, that abandoned house to the north that's not on your property? No, no, that's a different different piece of property. Any other changes that you had on the map or you wanted to talk about or basically for those here um, in total, it's about a 51 acre parcel on Orange Gulf Road and this gram is looking to sub 
one being just under seven acres, and that would um, have the house and existing frame buildings on that six plus acres, and then the remaining uh, 44 plus or minus acres um, is what we're talking about that possibly the for now it would be as is whether she deemed to go ahead with the conservation easement on it or not but her intent at this point is not to develop the remaining almost 45 acres and, and the road frontage on that uh, piece was increased it's 252 so it's good yep. okay. yeah Um, and the well and the septic is alienated out of the So, Dan and Roy, do you have any comments? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Admittedly, we need to get up to date on our what we have for technology, but um, if somebody wanted to take a look at the map or not. Otherwise, um, for the information that we have on this, before we open our public hearing, we need to do a seeker determination, which is a series of 11 questions and answers to this are based on the information that we've gathered on this proposed two lot subdivision. Um, the answers, there's one of two answers. Uh, one is either no or small impact may occur, or the second answer may be moderate to large impact. I will read the questions, and if we have any further discussion, otherwise we'll determine um, based on the information that we have on this. Number one, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? No or small impact. Any discussion? Okay. Two, will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity in the use of the land? No or small impact. Number three, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. No or small impact. Number four, will a proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. No or small impact. <clears throat> Five, will a proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. 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 Number six, will a proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewed, renewable energy opportunities? No. Seven, will a proposed action impact existing A, public or private water supplies or B, public and private wastewater treatment utilities? No. No and no. Will a proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. No. Nine, will a proposed action result in adverse change to natural resources, such as wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, and fauna? No. No. 10, will a proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. 11, will a proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No. No. Based on these questions, these answers, I move for a negative declaration. I second the motion. Second by Kevin. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries for a negative death. So based with that, 
We did get comments back from the Onondaga County Planning Board. Did you get a copy of that? No. Doesn't matter, they didn't say anything bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're good. No Basically, good there's a lot of whereas's on it, and at the bottom it comes back to be it resolved that they have see that there will be no significant adverse intercommunity wide or conflict implications. So we're all set, Amy? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to open public hearing. Second motion. motion. All right, John, you vote. <laughs> Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Public hearing is now open. If anybody in either here or online wishes to comment, state your name and address, please. Uh, Robert Fredericks, uh, 30 on 81 Orendale, by road. So the property that you're talking about subdividing is just the part that runs along Orange Gulf Road. 640 feet from the road. Can I show them the map soon? Yes, I should. Yeah. So, so this is going to stay the same. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're right here. Oh. We're right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we probably should have them addressed. So it's just so it can take minutes. So just, yeah. 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 Kevin. Yeah. 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 Kevin. Kevin. Yes, Kevin. 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 Kevin, come up here and address us so we can hear it for Mr. Fredericks. Come on up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. So your question was. So yeah. I, well, I was just concerned about this part of the property. This, if it's just this part of the property, it really doesn't impact me at all. Our property's here. Okay. So as long as this part here is yeah. staying as so it is, this that's is fine. it's odd shaped. Yeah. But all of that that's is the part one parcel. That's... Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. Anybody else have a question? We raised their hand. Uh, Michael Miller on Zoom. Mike, Hi. can you hear us? And uh, if so, you need to unmute on your end. I, I did unmute. Can you hear me? Um, Can you talk so we can? Uh, yeah. Anything? Can you hear me? Can you hear anything? Right. <laughs> can you hear me at all? I want to check your sound. Yeah. Okay. Go again. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sorry. No. No problem. Hi, Francis. <laughs> um, it's uh, so I just I'm I'm wondering about um, I'm really glad to hear about the intention of something like a, a forever wild status, but um, you know, the, the larger parcel is directly behind my house. So I want to understand more about, um, you know, how, how we can really assure that that land is, is not going to be developed. Um, it seems to me that that's really germane to the question of the approval of the application and also the answer to those, uh, I think, secret questions that, that you just answered. So I, yeah. I guess I'm curious about that. Right. Um, well, how can I assure you? Um, I, I don't know how to do that, Mike, except to tell you that I have no intention of developing it. So, right. There, there's some sort of application process, right, for, for conservation status? or. Oh, yes. It's a very long process that has not been begun yet. Right. So, Mr. Can Miller, you? over the years, um, a lot of applications when they come in at at that time people indicate well to begin with a lot of them may right off the bat say yep i'm going to subdivide this and my intent is i'm going to build and we're going to have five lots or it's going to be five houses right off the bat 
and others have come in over the years and said, I just want to subdivide off like Ms. Grime is doing, and we have to take it at their word at this point what their intent is at that point. And, and it is not a requirement no. for you to make that determination here in front of this board. Um, that's not a requirement in order to get the approval from the board for the subdivision, for, for the subdivision or what your intentions are. Absolutely, it would be nice to, to know those specific intentions, but it wouldn't bar you from getting um, the application approved whether you said you were going to keep it as forever wild or you're going to develop it. That's that. Jamie, am I correct there? Yes, it's that not a requirement. Absolutely correct. Right now that this subdivision meets all of the requirements of yes. the code, no variances are required. If there were variances required, then there might be some restrictions yes. that could be put on it. But right now, um, this board, I think, is generally finding they haven't made a final determination that it, it does conform with all parts of the code. Mm -hmm. So um, they're not required to say anything right now the only thing that could go on there is one single family homes if someone if there was going to be further development it would have to come back for a, a whole different kind of approval right. and there is limited road frontage um, on the main road it would require pretty significant development mm -hmm. right mr Marcus? yes certainly would <laughs> and maintain that 200 feet so does that help you, Mr. Miller? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, I guess I'm, well, I, I maybe again, maybe it doesn't speak to the application, but um, I guess my assumption, which may have been wrong, is that, that both parcels would be sold, uh, but it sounds like maybe potentially uh, the applicants are, 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 are maintaining ownership of them, but, but dividing them. No, no, I would, I'm selling the, the small parcel and eventually the larger parcel will not be in my hands because it will be held by a, a trust. You know, that's the basic intention right now. I see. But it's a, and so that's then out of my hands. Right. Okay. And, and can I ask somebody commented about like the, it got a little garbled. So talking about the, Obviously, it's surrounded by other lots, right? So building a road into there would, I mean, would that be, is that something <laughs> that I, I would be reasonable in imagining could happen with the filling out of the next application by the next party? Or would that be, a because um, it seems like that goes to the question of, is there a significant impact on the, on you know, on the area, on the character of the area? So I guess I want to know what's so we, the road. so Mr. Miller, we have to take this application at its face value here and now. And applicant has just said she wanted a two lot subdivision. And currently this meets all of our codes for that. What happens in the future if it went into like a conservation easement, it's not gonna be developed. If it doesn't, and they wanted to put and develop a road in, it's going to be back up here in front of this board again. It's not just going to happen. Except if there's a single home. Right. Correct. Right. But right. he was more worried, I think, about. But a single home would put a driveway, and there is enough right. road frontage to put a driveway. Yes. Yes. Okay. But as That's far very as helpful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Just for that. We'll motion close the public hearing. Motion okay. by John to close I'll the second public hearing. Kevin seconds. All in favor of closing public hearing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing is now closed. Any further comments? No. No. Ready for a motion? Got a motion. <laughs> Waiting for a motion. I'll make a motion. I just need the map so I can read off the map. Okay. 
there a date on this one? Yeah. <clears throat> revision date? Is there a revision date on this? No revision date. But there have been revisions made. Yes. Um, the last one was on September 8th. Yeah, I didn't see a revision date either. No, usually the surveyor. But, but you see the changes made. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we can ask them to add that to the mile. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Okay, so I make a motion uh, to approve the two lot subdivision of uh, 4006 Orange Gulf Road, a uh, tax map, map number 007.02-29.1, based on a map dated 71721 with revisions without a date for those revisions and the caveat would be that the maps that are submitted have the revision dates added to the maps. That's my motion. I'll second. John, second. Any further discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposition? Hearing none. Motion carries. Oops. Okay. So and Steve either. can work with you to get the date okay. put on there. And, yeah. Okay. What, what is this? Pardon me. The next step would be the maps with the mylars, all the copies you need. And they're, the time, the clock is ticking. Okay. So you need to get them, get them back up here. So either myself or Tim can sign them. And then you have to get them filed the county and here and et cetera, et cetera. What is the time frame? 60 days. days. Oh, 60 days. Okay. So okay. you just want them to include a revision date on the plan. Okay. Yep. And then I bring them, I'm sorry, where do I bring the maps? When I get them? There, there's, a, there's a whole checklist available. Well, you bring it up here, right, for signature. And then there's a checklist of what you need to do okay. online um, at um, the Onondaga County Clerk site. Okay. Onondaga County. Okay. Yep, and just subdivision checklist, and it'll tell you exactly what to okay. do. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, to change what the last item was on our agenda and touch on that real brief. Please. Certainly, yeah, you can come out of order. Just look at that. Yeah, anyway, okay. Um, for those here for our agenda, um, with the apology to pivot, energy, Gordon, I'm going to move Comar Farm up a little bit just to talk real quick on where we're at with this because we got a map, we have no paperwork, no fees paid, no nothing, nothing. So I want to touch real quickly your next steps and we can't do anything this month, but I just really want to quickly get through to you what needs to be done. Okay. Okay. So, and I think you've been in conversation with Tim. Yeah, and I and we submitted the mylar maps. And, uh, okay. Usually, this is the last step of mylar. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Because we may we may need changes made on the yeah. maps. Okay. I already know there's changes yep. Yep. necessary with them. So usually, it's a paper copy and also a high quality PDF that we can send, like to our engineer, that he can look over it. Um, my understanding is that you filled out some paperwork, but it was the wrong. Yeah, and I was given this form. In fact, I was told that I probably wouldn't be here until next month. But I got a voicemail saying I'm on the it was agenda. A, some so, confusion and yeah. So, and so, I did, so I was given this to fill out saying that was the form I was missing, but it seems like it's the same questions as the one I submitted.
So we're on the same wavelength. Basically, you want to do it two lots. So we can't do a whole lot with the mylars. We need paper copies and PDF copy. You're working with. Um, Control. They should should know okay. what we need. Um, mylars are the last stop. Okay. Like the last applicant, and now she's going to get these. Ah, okay. Um, the cost. Yeah. It looks like the gist of this is correct. I don't know what the you know where the maps are. Um, some maps, okay. But they might learn them. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, same surveyor actually who just mm -hmm. did the last one. Right. Um, and he can uh, send a PDF if you can let him know okay. to um, the town clerk. Okay. Here in Pompey, he has all of her information. Okay. And this application, um, you know, we'll go over it. But it, um, I noticed that the ag data statement was not filled out. Not filled out. So this, this does need to be filled out. Okay. And you can, oh, okay. Okay. You can call, call Nikki. I'll help you do that. Okay. Let's be filled out there. So. We have a, a requirement of a bunch of copies, or does if we just make the copies, or on the app? Yes, she'll make those copies. Okay, and she can, or Mary Beth, okay. <laughs> to scan them. So we get. Them. So can you talk to her about filling out that ad data statement and the fees? Okay, I paid. Uh, oh, you paid already. Okay, yeah. all right. So we'll get this to her. The process. Yep. Okay. And have Gary Katra on the PDF, please. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Do I have to take all this? No. Nope. Oh, you keep it. Oh, okay. No, we're keeping that. I'm going to give we'll it to in, you. We'll be in very fast. Touch your sure. key. Okay. 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 We apologize for the confusion, but we'll get that. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so next one. Pivot, pivot energy. Okay, now pivot energy. Um, what's the site? Sweet Road. All right. Um, concept site review on Sweet Road, parcel number 012.01 03 1. Uh, this is for a Tier three solar farm. Um, Gordon, for those here of interest and so on, this is based on current local law that was adopted in a July meeting, I believe. Um, so um, this is the first. Um, application that kind of Pompey has had. So we're kind of learning our way through it. Um, the Wilcock sent information for this application. Um, our board has been going over the local law and then researching different uh, parameters to try to become more familiar with this to make sure that what applications come in um, meet the spirit and intent. And in a nutshell, the first part of this, it comes before the planning board for a concept review. And if we, after we've gone through the process and reviewed it, if we feel that it is meets the spirit and intent of the law and is worthy of a consideration, we write the letter of recommendation, it goes to the town board, the town board then has to go through and decide if they issue 
a solar overlay zone over that area. If that's approved, then the whole thing comes back to the planning board for actual site plan review. So in the whole context of things, the planning board could see it twice. But there's a series of steps through the way that cross the T's, dot the I's, does it, is it complete, does it meet the spirit, does it meet the letter of the law? So you want to add anything? No, you said it perfectly well. Okay, so with that, I guess, Gordon. Sure. Thanks. Do you want me to get in the camera or do I? That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, can no. move it. Yeah. I can move it a little. No, that's fine. Uh, you can face that way or whatever way you're comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, my name is Gordon Woodcock. I'm representing Pivot Energy and uh, Pompey Community Solar. As Chairperson Smith said, we're submitted in July concept site plan and supporting figures for a 4.25 megawatt community solar project. Uh, covering approximately 22 acres of the 96 acre parcel that's currently zoned agricultural. As designed, the system will produce enough energy for approximately 900 homes, average homes in New York each year. And it's located on Sweet and Upsuit Road, just a little bit north, in fact, of where Empire Farm Days was held this year. It's a brief summary of the project. Happy to answer any questions you may have. A couple questions. Um, what could, um, just out of curiosity, why are the arrays oriented east west instead of south? It's a very good question, and I should have mentioned it's on a, what's called a single axis tracker. So, as the industries evolved, this has become in the last few years, in fact, cost effective and advantageous to mount panels on a single axis tracker. So, they're essentially flat but they track the sun from east to west each day to increase the, the energy production. You can imagine, well, as panels are pointed directly at the sun, they produce more energy. The more time you're able to keep them pointed directly at the sun, the more energy you'll get. And you're, you'll see more and more systems coming out like that on single axis trackers. Then the other question I had was, um, so are there, um, large inverters or the micro inverters? What we're using or proposing for this project anyway is a, a string inverter, a three phase string inverter. So maybe a little bit bigger than a desktop computer, but they're very efficient and then low footprint you could say, because you can mount them directly on the racking without having to do a, a large concrete slab like you would for a larger single inverter. So, in this case, each inverter is rated to put out 125 kilowatts, which is pretty amazing because like the solar inverter at my house is comparably sized and at this point, maybe eight years old or something and rated to put out about 10 kilowatts. So they've become really advanced at this point. You can put out a lot of power and we'd have 40 inverters in this case scattered throughout the array field. So that single pole tracking system with mm -hmm. the field this large, I've, I've seen them one, two, or three at someone's home. How does that work? They're all, how many on a single pole? So it's it's a series of poles and they're typically either mounted into the ground using a dribble, driven pile system yep. or auger screw. So we're not doing concrete foundations there, but it's a series of poles. And then the, the torque tube or main mounting system is attached to those vertical piles. And then the panels are mounted to that. that. Right, but this is a, a moving. It is, but if you could imagine these, you know, piles. I, I have a yeah solar array system in my yard that's piles, but it's stationary. This right. is a rack. Yeah, so a if, rack you, if you could imagine system. those piles running north south, right, and a long metal bar spanning them, right. and then the panels sitting on top of them, and that that bar or tube that's sitting on top of the piles is what rotates. How long of a span rotates? Uh, well, it depends on the design, but they're typically grouped into sections of about 96 modules, and then those are linked. Yep. Uh, and it's you know it's very incremental movement because you're adjusting the the array orientation, say every 10 minutes to just make these micro adjustments okay. as the sun moves throughout the sky or across the sky. Yeah. 
And then the um, in the northwest corner there, it looks like it's the building right in the middle of the delineated wetland. Yeah, there's a DEC, we think a DEC wetlands there. And you know, in all likelihood, we prefer to avoid that. So of course DEC has some provisions in place to enable development in a wetland if you absolutely have to, but the first priority is avoidance. Uh, given that this is conceptual, we before getting too creative, we wanted to show the consolidated footprint of the array and get the town's feedback as far as other layout considerations before getting getting too precise. But yes, in all likelihood, we would find cause to avoid that wetland and stay out of the adjacent area. Okay. Okay. Out of the 96 total areas, acres total area, how much is currently active farmland, not just what you propose using, but out of 96, how much is actual farmland being used right now? I don't have the exact number. I'm going to guess about 40 acres. 35. 35. And how much is the larger field that you would pretty much be using? 20, 22. Have you talked about or designed any, um, I know there's a lot of like using it for both solar panels and agriculture, like sheep mm -hmm. or bees with wildflowers. Is there any discussion on adding that to it? Definitely. All of our arrays are planted with a native pollinator friendly habitat that also, yeah, also accommodates grazing. We work with, uh, in fact, a New York based grazing consultant called Agrivoltaic Solutions. So they provide input uh, to array layout, make sure that we're not designing it in a way that would be incompatible with grazing. Right. And as a company, we're moving closer and closer to just specifying grazing on all of our operations. But right now when we're, so we're talking about vegetation management is, you know, those pollinators grow up uh, and things are growing up in the array field. How do you keep it clear? And you can either use mechanical means like mowing or now in New York, especially it's becoming very common to graze. And so uh, we do prefer sheep grazing when you send it out for bids for operations and maintenance. Somebody comes in with a much lower bid for mechanical maintenance. Of course, you have to consider that compared to, or compared to sheep grazing. But as a company, you know, we really support and endorse sheep grazing because it just I, I it have, makes a lot of sense. I have uh, mine in a horse paddock and the horses graze and keep the grass down. Yeah. So I have a 21 baby for my house and we use it for shade and for yeah. Grass. So it works works fairly well. Yeah. And you know, you're seeing other complementary uses right now is like like bees you know, pollination. Leveraging that pollinator friendly habitat to, to support Hummingbirds, bats, there's other pollinators. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's like we get kind of locked in on honeybees. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of different pollinators. Though. Good. So what's the life expectancy? So the panels are, are warranted for power. I have a 25-year power output warranty. It, estimates vary, but certainly people put it lifetime of a, of a well-made solar panel, 30 to 35 years. Um, the power output contract with utility will be for 25 years and and, and different so that would be the would be the minimum operating yeah. life would be 25 how years. are you managing the mitigation and the reclamation after 35 years or whatever it's another very good question and uh, new york has as a state has really almost not i want to say universally but really pioneered or, or significantly pushed ahead the adoption of of decommissioning plans and decommissioning securities. And I believe the town law has a provision that mandates uh, decommissioning security. So not just the plans and this is generally what we're gonna do, but a security to ensure that the monies are there. What kind of securities do you guys generally use? Most of uh, typically a decommissioning bond. Okay. Yeah. So um, and how do we other towns that I work in that require monetary security, like actual cash, Yeah. which, the solar companies have been fine with providing. Okay, what is our requirement? A bond? We don't, um, I don't believe we have a specific requirement. It would be whatever we think is appropriate. Okay, we just have a mm -hmm. general term that. Right. The problem with the bonds is they're like you have to renew them every year and so right. we keep track of them. And right. They, we found that to not be a great um, methodology. Hard to call, too. Very hard to call. Very difficult. Yeah. Right. So, 
Um, so we've been. Uh, but letters of credit would be easy, but again, that's not so much. Um, again, um, and because we trust that we pay cash. Yeah. Yes. And it goes into a non interest bearing account. I know. Yes. <laughs> and sits in the town until long past whenever we all will be here. But how do you determine how much you need? There's a you can explain that there is a there is a formula um, yeah. that the state of New York has set up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I haven't seen one for less than $150,000 just for starters. You know, it's kind of based on today's value. So these so, panels when they're when you're done and you're mm -hmm. uh, taking back the property, what happens to the panel itself? Does it go to a landfill? Does it? Yeah, it really depends. And the, the, yeah, the panel recycling is an industry that's just starting to ramp up in parallel with the, the solar industry. So as you're seeing more and more systems deployed, people are starting to ask that very question, what are we going to do at end of life? And certainly recycling is one option, but also repurposing. So uh, some industries of or companies have popped up to support reusing those panels. Maybe Sure, if uh, at the end of 25 years, you know, scenario could be, well, we're going to repower. We want to repower with more efficient modules, for example. We're going to have these solar panels that are still producing power, but we want to use more efficient modules if the town was for it and if the landowner was for it. Just conceptually, right? But those panels still have useful life and could certainly be allocated to any number of places, other countries, uh, other operations, whatever. So there's a actually a big market ramping up now for repurposing modules. Would there anything? Would there be any opposition to a landfill taking it, or is it no? Not yes, enough. there would be. There are certain uh, components that would not be uh, would not fit the requirements for most landfills. I my understanding is that you can landfill the panels. It depends on the panel type. There's certainly some. Yeah, there's certainly some what's called thin film panels that are cadmium tellurium, which are right. heavy metals, pretty toxic. Right. If not handled properly, most of the companies making those panels, in fact, have active recycling programs because not only are those materials potentially toxic or more toxic, mm -hmm. realistically, but they're also rare. So their supply chain depends on having ready access to the materials. They recycle them. The panels that we're proposing are primarily composed of crystalline silicon, which is you know one of the most abundant elements in the Earth's crust, and also relatively inert and harmless. Uh, you know, there's glass and aluminum and some other components, but my understanding is that you know, sure, you want to be careful, but you, if you had to, you could take it to a landfill. That would not be our preference, of course. Right, right. If the landfill was permitted to accept that type of waste and whatnot, and then of course the foundations are recyclable as scrap. Right. Um, and the manufacturer on your panels? Well, you know, it's that that remains to be seen. We got to look at the market when we're ready to build and see who's out there. But, okay. Yeah. And approximately what kind of wattage? Right now we're looking at anywhere between 460 watts to 520 watts per module. Wow. Yeah. So let's circle the wagons and come back to, you know, there's a lot of technicality going on here, but in the whole concept of things that part of what we're charged with is, is this a, a fit? Um, let's start with the actual site and keeping in mind what the master plan within the town of Pompey is, which it does encourage re, uh, renewable energy. Um, it also encourages view sheds. It also encourages agriculture. Um, within our law, it also refers to um, ag and markets. And I guess I'm going to toss these out here of this particular location is in with our master plan. It is within the delineated view shed. It's the soils with the exception of the wetlands. Um, and I need to go back, but I've written down um, predominantly it's Lima silt loam, which is prime farmland in New York State, and it's also honey oil silt loam, and these are um, like two to eight and three to eight percent slopes. Again, both prime farmland, and if you refer into the ag and markets, that part of their siting goals for solar arrays, that active rotational farmland is most important, and especially comprised of farm 
prime farmland soils. Um, so I just offered these things to think about locations. Yeah, there's two issues you so, bring up. One is uh, view shed. So what was the maximum height? 10 feet? Okay, so that could be somewhat mitigated with fencing or trees or whatever. Um, where does the, like the sheep grazing and all of that, where does that fit into the ag and market on, on this? Does that meet that? There, I mean, how much sheep grazing is going on? They actually bring the <laughs> sheep in, cut it down, and they move the sheep out. Yeah, and it's, it is becoming a pretty vibrant. Yeah. Okay, I, I, if they're growing soybeans, there goes your tofu. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but I know the federal Which government. Which they are saying tofu is going up this. <laughs> I, I spoke with someone that works so, for the federal government, and the sheep thing has become a big deal where they, they move them around to yeah. various sites. Yeah. Because they a eat everything. There is, yeah, there is yeah. a business yeah. for it. Yeah. But so. it's a change in the, the dynamics of it. Right. So. But it's, I think it still meets the. the um, the idea of ag and markets and, and agriculture, you know, I mean, we can't grow any of those crops you grow without the bees pollinating and we can't have them pollinating without having pollination and, you know, sheep need to eat so we can make sweaters. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, and, and I would put forth, I understand it is sign up the land for a lengthy period, but as we've discussed, it's also using pollinator friendly habitat, potentially sheep grazing, both of which can serve to enrich the land. So at the end of project life, when you've decommissioned it, um, it's as good or better than it was now. So it's considerably different than tying it up or paving it, something like that, where it's no longer much more difficult to reclaim as farmland. But the reclamation, we're talking 35 years yeah. down the road, yeah. at least. Yeah. If soybean prices do go through the roof, um, probably be Good cause to start so farming it again. Soybeans already are up. Anyway, do you get any thoughts, Roy? Right. Right. And this is yeah. how many acres on the 96 acres? This 22. is 22. 22. Yeah, that's right. Everything else. Well, so 22 if I, out of 35 actively tillable, the rest is all woodland. Right. But if well, I. 35 is not actually tillable. The county put a drainage ditch in the northern field and wet. It's, it's now soaking wet. So I can't farm on the north side because they did a drainage ditch and they're draining all the sweet road into my northern field. So if I bought the property not, myself, the 96 acres, could I build houses on 21 acres by coming in front of this board and getting an approval? Um, well, yes, it would it would be quite a process, but but I could do that. said to the last yeah. Right. I, I could I could You'd have, yes. Build on 21 acres. If I had 96 acres, I could continue farming 96 and build houses on 21 acres. That that would be allowable. Depending on the layout, sure, and, yeah. the, and the road and the access. nice houses. I'd make nice houses. Okay. I'm just trying to give a, myself a perspective that those houses would probably be there longer than 35 years. Yeah. Ones I would build, yeah, they'd be, they'd be they, solar. They'd yeah. so I know that cars and the solar is better than houses. Uh, no, I'm just saying that, the, you know, the land couldn't be used for other things. It's not like because it's agriculture, we prevent anything happening on that land. I'm just throwing that out. Just, right, but it is an issue for, this, I mean, it's just as a criterion of the solar. Um, I understand, right. I understand. I understand. I, I, I've never seen an attractive solar array yet. So. Well, let, so this brings up an interesting point. I, mean, again, I like mine. Just, I look at it. Every time I look at my array out in the backyard, I look at my bill at the same time. <laughs> and it's very right. attractive. Well, this oh, first sure. it was I have solar up on our dairy barn. So, right. right. But it's up and we still have our land. Sure. I did like your green roof before the solar was up there, but I, I'm okay with the solar. Green. Hard to see it though. Yeah, it's, still green. it's actually a more green roof now with solar. <laughs> when, when we're talking nope. about view shed just for this board, because this is the first time we're discussing this, right? Yeah. So, um, whose view shed are we talking about? Correct. It's very important. Um, it is on Sweet Road, it's like literally right there. So, every traveling part of the public will see it on their way to Paladino's farm. 
store. It's near there, right? Correct. Bef like north or south of it, or north? No. Just north south of, of the just north of Sevier, right? Uh, south, south of Sevier. Yeah. North of just north of uh, Price Falls Road. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. And, and there is existing vegetation along Sweet Road, of course, that's just natural growth, and we would look at supplementing that with vegetative screening. We wouldn't see it from the road. But I definitely buffer any visual yeah, impacts from drivers. How so far hills in Pompey, though, is- How far back is the array? See it right next to it. It's- Some of the hills, in, the Pompey, side, some of the hills in Pompey, yeah. we can see the uh, windmills in Fenner. Oh, I know. Just yeah. What's the bars? But they, you can't they, see my fine. panels from the road, though, because they're behind my house. It's still- you may not see it from Sweet Road, but you may see it. Oh, oh from other hills. Absolutely. Absolutely. Back. That's that one. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a question too on, I mean, your map didn't show like you intended on putting any uh, screening vegetation along Sweet Road. I, I thought there's some vegetation uh, buffer areas that are indicated. There's some there, yeah. but... Uh, oh, that it's in fact actual site plan yeah, that'll get that that'll get in the actual site plan where well yes but it impacts you should. but but yeah well we're well we're making the recommendation i think the question is can it be put there is there what kind of vegetation is it screenable do you want it screened it, maybe yeah. you think it's perfectly fine so again kind of going through this exercise that 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 this was done before mm -hmm. Um, is really looking ahead to the site plan. No. Um, is it if it's screenable and we think it can be screened, then it's okay. Or we don't like want it screened because everybody thinks the solar rays are beautiful. Again, there are people who think that that they are. Right. It's just a great progress and and so forth. So, what is the distance off Sweet Road? About a couple hundred feet. Uh, it, it looks like a hundred feet off the property line. Oh. The road right away. And, and, and what, it, it, but at Sweet Road, and I don't have my compass with me, but Sweet Road with that 150 feet or whatever, putting a sufficient height, what, what would the impact be on that solar? I mean, would you have to minimize how high the vegetation is? Well, we would just pull it back far enough from the array that there wasn't a lot of adverse impact, impact from shading, yeah. And of course, but, right, the, the growth doesn't have to be that hot, high to screen the array because, like we talked about, it's not a 10 feet. That's not a yeah, yeah, yeah. 600 foot tall wind tower or something like that, too. Yeah. You know, and maybe the, the site's fine, but you're going to eventually say in site plan it needs to be way back further from the road, right? Right. So you can have more screening of vegetation. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a question. Also, there is there's a resident nearby. I, I don't know who that is. And, mm -hmm. um, the question is, you know, I think we should certainly hear from that neighbor sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. When you talk about view shed, is that neighbor aware of? Yes. Yeah. You're talking about uh, bomb to the south. It's or... a. She, she's got. She can, I can't even see her house from when I'm working that field. She can't see that either. There's probably 150 feet of of uh, view shed just on our co our common property to the south. The person that we're talking about is Sean Stasek. Okay, I'm right in the middle. There. Correct, that's his, I sold him that house. Okay. For the yeah. record, can you state your name? So William Osikowski. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? Osikowski. And I cleared that land, it was all, it was not productive farmland. And I cleared that land probably five, six years ago with a bulldozer, not in, not even thinking about this solar, um, as I operate a beef farm on the other side on Route 91. So I needed that for hay. And so I cleared that out, cleaned it all out, and that was when Colonel Marsh was the supervisor. And I cleared all that up, and I cleared the other field up, and then I reclaimed it to make it agriculture. And if you think I'm making a lot of money bailing hay, huh. and, you, know, the, you know, I'm looking at um, cost benefit. There's no, 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 um, no comparison. Would you continue haying the other yes. 96 acres or whatever? The well, other... 96, uh, oh, what is the usable land is just at 30 acres. The rest is all wooded. Okay. Okay. 
and I've logged it, yep. you know, which is a form of agriculture, but I yep. logged it. And it's on a 10-year um, program to re-log it when, when, it, when the trees are a certain size. I didn't butcher it. And I'm trying to maintain, you know, logging as a crop as well. So I'm not taking anything less than two feet in diameter. So anything above that, we're cutting it and opening it up. And I've logged it. And I'm probably 15 years looking at it again. And I'm now considering before this goes on, if it ever happens, log it again before this comes because access is always with that solar and uh, fencing and all the other stuff right. makes it very difficult to access. And add sheep to the beef and put them under the solar panel. I'd rather raise uh, beef, but the sheep, uh, I, don't, I don't do sheep, but I like. I guess, I guess the beef could graze under. Yeah, some, yeah. all the calves could, but uh, that's a whole different. That's a different. Yeah. A point of conversation. Yeah. Okay. So, but back to the view. So, this one that's closest to Sweet Road, would there, how much objection is there to moving that array, say, into the wooded section, clearing out the wooded section and relocating? We would need to study that woodland area and understand if it is wetlands, then that's. That would be the northern piece. Yeah. That that's the, that's the challenge. Money, it's probably not wetlands. Yeah. But, you know, that's where you have to get field biologists out and say, okay, we're. Let's look at this property. Let's see if there is but it's vegetation. The what? It's on the table. Sure. I mean, all right. If, the, if that's something that the, the town feels strongly about, or recommend, of course. But when you're calling view sheds, you know, for me, I mean, Sweet Road certainly going to be one of the most significant view sheds in the town. Yeah, it's it's one of those things too, where this this specific location, I've uh, driven it and seen it, and there's existing vegetation, as I said, along the road, and I, I think we can screen it in a way that's uh, limiting sight lines to the array, at least from Sweet Road. Of course, wider view shed, like you've mentioned, some of the hills farther away. So well, the brewery. Be I mean, I don't. You know. Yeah. Specifically, what hills are we seeing this from? The only way you can see it is from the WIXD tower. They put their camera on; they'll be able to see it. Nobody else can see it. Right. So there's not a specific location where you're looking no, at the There's nothing higher than that. Poppy and it's not even not even Paladino's Carly Farm. Right. You can't see it because there's it's there's all woods around it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody from the east, from the west. It's a it's a vacant, vacant uh it's agriculture and they're growing crops there. So you could put a screening there, and I don't think anybody would know that. I know it was there. You're talking about the screen on Sweet Road. Screen, screen on, Sweet, on Sweet Road. Right. Nobody else is going to see it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's a parking spot up on a hill somewhere that no. it's right down on. No. Okay. There's no lover lane you can go. Look <laughs> but if there is, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Even I'm from Sevier, you can't see it. Yeah. Okay. So I think that needs to be in consideration when we're talking view shed. Where is the view? You know, where is, you know, where can you see it? Mm -hmm. Right. Not Absolutely. just not just saying specifically view shed. And what's the thing they do with uh, the cell towers? They fly a balloon. I was going to say, so drive around so town and only the balloon will only be ten feet off the ground. Well, right. Yeah, and so something that can be done here is initially a view shed analysis, doing just what you're talking about based on topography, right. existing vegetation, height of the array. It's pretty uh, relatively easy in skilled hands right now to do a GIS analysis and, and model where it's going to be visible. The other thing that can complement that is photorealistic simulations. Right. So, and you can see kind of what does it look like now. You can model in vegetation growth and, and say what does it look like in five to seven years. Like so do you have some arrays in town now that you're in town? Mm -hmm. No, this would be the first array that I'm aware of in Bobby. central. Yeah. No, central New York. In central, all of central New York. Yeah, we have uh, an array in the town of Verona going in, and um, a few others in the town of Ticonderoga and Essex County. So I bet I can give you some examples. I, I know what you're saying. There's certainly some arrays that, if they're not done well, they're not as attractive as others. Uh, chain link fence, for example, can be kind of unpleasant to look at, but what we'll use is right. a, a deer fence. So agricultural style fence with wooden posts and uh, wire mesh. It's not as, 
I guess, obtrusive as maybe a chain link fence. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, you know, at some point getting some idea what you consider to be a, a well done, uh, well screened solar array field. So, yeah. When you chose this site, did you take into consideration any of those things? Because you knew you'd have to come in front of this board. Did you take into consideration view shed and screening and all that? Because I'm sure you've had those questions at other boards. Yeah, you know there aren't, you know there aren't, of course, a ton of sites that are even would even lend themselves to a solar array, right? So immediately you're you're calling the possibilities and have three phase and right yeah no i think it, we've it's been discussed in the town of Pompey. it's fairly limited there may be because of three phase infrastructure and substation capacity there's yeah. you know, maybe enough space for four projects comparably sized uh, it's just the grid can only handle so much so you know you immediately kind of constrained by where the three phase lines are but then certainly you look at you know those environmental factors is it in a densely populated area where there's you know, houses all around it. That's something that, you know, is going to be potentially challenging if, unless, like we've said, some people support solar and be like, yeah, great, a solar array is going next. But you don't, you can't anticipate that. So you say, hey, there's a bunch of houses. And you, go, you look at wetlands, you look at topography. Um, you know, what does the landowner think? What's their recommendation? What are the historical uses of the site? Are there cultural factors to consider or historical sites nearby that could be impacted by it? So there's a number of factors that you collectively evaluate and try to find a good site before you come here yeah of course uh, yeah. and you know in this case we weren't sure what the town's regulations were what the requirements were because they weren't set up at the time yeah. fine yet. yeah so who contacted who first i think i don't know i would I, I don't think that really matters. <laughs> I know we're just hanging out one day and said, hey, let's have a solar farm. Having to clear up the Paladinos. No, I, I, I actually don't. I, 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 I don't know. It's been always something I wanted to do anyway. Because, uh, you know, you're looking in the news and you're looking at the oil, price of fuel oil, and you're looking at, you know, I've always wanted to have a hydro plant and um, have an engineering background. So I'm Wanted to try hydro plants. Well, I couldn't build one in Price Falls, Price Falls, because I live off of that. Um, and then I was like, well, geez, how about solar or windmill? Uh, and I wasn't too crazy about the windmills. And then the solar just, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine that we consult on other projects together. He says, hey, how about trying a solar? And he introduced me to Gordon. And I went, well, hey, let's, let's see what we can do there. And then the more we start, re all of us start researching it, it looked like it was something that is viable. And I and I looked at it as, well, if we do that, what is you know, all the effort, all the work I put into that field, clear it out. It didn't happen overnight. And then I'm, you know, in fact, I bailed hay in the northern field today. And of course, I cursed the county for putting that drainage in there because there's a swat of water going through that. So that just that's just great. And so what do I do with that? And then um, it makes you know, you feel I'm, better. Pardon? If it makes you feel better. I think every single farmer has water in every field that you never had before. <laughs> well, it, 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 I agree with you there. But when you, <laughs> they put in 10, 12 inch culvert from the western side of Sweet Road to drain that whole roadway into my field, you get a little, there, it's wet, yes. You're absolutely right, mm -hmm. but not. I, I mean, I got stuck in there Sunday. If you see a tractor sitting in a mud hole, that was me. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the other things that that we're faced here on the board is we. It doesn't seem that long ago we went through the windmill right. issue. <laughs> now you know that's we've moved on to solar, and then you know so everyone will have a hydrogen generator at their house uh, probably in twenty years. So. Uh, Right. It, 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 technology moves pretty quick and it's hard for us to keep up with it. It took us quite a while to get the, the windmill uh, regulations passed and went through that whole theory. Now we're dealing with, with, uh, with this issue and, um, and how long will this be the favorable way for energy? You know? So what's the capacity for you? You know, say that this works, Sweet Road, this one is successful for you guys and everything mm -hmm. goes well. 
What would, and the landowner across the street says, you know, I want one too. Well, that would, I believe, be in violation of the law as it's written. I, I suppose yeah. you could do a variance, but there's a buffer or an exclusion area where there's one project and then I, I forget what the radius, you can't have other projects. I think it's below. In, and that's in New York State. That's in, no, oh, it's in our, in our wall. It's like a mile. I think it's in the overway wall. Oh, it is a mile then. Yeah, so there's some, some attention paid to cumulative impacts and I, I think that's, that's a good provision. Uh, of course, you know, what we're doing here is we're building a project and putting in all the capital to install this this technology that generates electricity from the sun, right? I mean, it's, you know, think what you will about the visibility of it, but it's, it's pretty amazing that we can take sunlight and convert it into electricity. And once it's built, there's you know, very marginal operating costs. It's really not a lot going on once it's built. It's gonna sit there and produce energy for the next realistically 30, 35 years. Once it's built, there's it's good energy. It's as clean, uh, both environmentally and from a, an electrical engineering perspective, as anything out there. I mean, this is a, a very technologically proficient. Came out when started it? using it maybe 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. That they overshot what they could produce with these arrays. I'm not. I'm not sure. They estimating how many. I don't know what the right terminology would be. Kilowatts that um, that it could produce. They underestimated, you know, how strong the winners were. They didn't take into the, you know, certain things into account so that the arrays that some people invested their own money in, these were private arrays. Yeah. And and the production fell way short of what was uh, forecasted. I, I don't know. Mine, think, mine is, well, yours is what it's designed, what's right. designed for. Mine's yeah, 10 years. You're talking about age? Mine's 10 years old and uh, it it overproduces what they estimate. Yeah. Okay. And winter, winter actually is better because of the cold, as long as there's not snow on it and not, not as many clouds. But but I, I think we could we could uh, energize every home in the United States with a solar array the size of like Rhode Island. Yeah, it really wouldn't lot. take that much um, square miles to yeah, do. And exactly. then, you know, it really is a mix. It's a mix of sun, it's a mix of wind, it's a mix of hydro. Right. Uh, there's a lot of complementary technologies. And as we talk about you know, re envisioning a new grid, solar is an important part of it. And we are, you know, like, you, like we were saying, this thing is gonna sit there and produce energy. And even if there's cold fusion comes out and we can generate all of our energy for a very low cost, so be this, is, this is paid for, this is operating, it's built, it's, it's doing good things. And- There are some environmental impacts though. There, there are, there's absolutely, you know, with anything, when you talk about generating energy, the scale that we consume it. Right. Right, there, it's just about minimizing those. Impacts. But even the manufacturing of some of the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the mining of some of the chemicals. I think the Uyghurs in China are mining some of the yeah. chemicals that are going going into those panels, and so it's not perfect, but no, it isn't. And I mean, it really is like that whole conflict I'm in saying it. Um, and as a company and as an industry, in fact, there's a lot of awareness there and a shift to move away from that. United States, I think, is in, in fact just. Saying we're not going to get you're not we're not going to allow panels from those conflict right. regions or the right. regions that regions that have those those ethical right. production issues. Yeah. So it's, Dan, yeah. in answer to your question, I think um, what you're talking about would be probably more dependent on the actual company that installed mm -hmm. that private array uh, that they overestimated for whatever reason what it was going to produce, but. Uh, a lot of those companies aren't in business anymore either. Well, that's part of it too. And this is so, a private individual that spent a lot of money. Yeah. So that's you know, a good it question. Pay, it, didn't, it didn't meet the... Uh, I mean, mine's going to pay but for... This is, mine's no, a nine to 10 year payback. Okay. My rooftop. Right, but that's a good question. How do we know this particular company putting in this array is going to be here five years from now? Well, if they're not, we've got a, we've got a bond or a cash security to take it down. Or, okay. I mean, I... Or they would probably sell it to somebody else. It's 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 right. a revenue generating asset that somebody mm -hmm. will. Want. Does that happen in the industry where you sell your fields to? Yes. Yeah, just like your mortgage in your house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe you'd want capital to fund something else somewhere else, right? It just it does happen. Yeah. They're developing uh, electric cars right now, and one of the things that we we've, we've been looking at is that some of the cars that are coming out have an estimated after a full charge five hundred twenty miles. On a charge, well, that's doable because that's basically what our our fuel vehicles are running. So once you have that, they're going to tap in. Right now, the way I understand it, Gordon, 
is that there's going to be such a demand on our on our grid system, we're not going to be able to produce enough electricity. Right, because everybody's going to plug their car in at night. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where we are. And we're selling our electricity all downstate. And we're in right now. We're trying to produce it here to keep it here. So where does this electricity go? Just in the grid? Well, it, so we're tying in this case, and there's not like the house at your the system at your house, for example, when it that when it's producing more energy than you're using, right. it's a residential installation, but it's going out into the distribution lines, and then sometimes you're powering your neighbors or <laughs> your neighbor's neighbors. It's similar here, but we don't have any site loads, so we're producing energy, sending it out to the distribution grid. And, and as I mentioned, it'll produce enough energy for approximately 900 ohms, right. average ohms in New York. So it, it really does just go out into the grid and find it's find the closest point. Where is it needed? And so a system like this is going to feed primarily the businesses and, right. and homes in and around. Because National Grid right now is just the delivery. Right. For yeah. The most part. Right. They're just delivering yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right. Anybody can give them the stuff and they deliver it. Yeah, and it's right. It's those you know turbines in Western New York or up in the North Country are spinning up. They're flooding the grid with energy, and you know the hydro plants and nuclear and all these full solar panel panels are coming online. But a system like this is not going out on the transmission network, so it is primarily using energy locally. Under New York guidelines, we set up basically they allow what's called remote crediting, so we can sign up area homes and businesses to buy electricity from the system at a discounted rate. And that's, you know, that's kind of a neat thing too. All right, so you really, once you stick it in the grid, you have no idea where it's going. Well, there are- Specifically, we're not, yeah, we don't know where each electron is going. That's, right, right. Yeah. The actual grid is doing that. But yeah. you're, you're gonna have subscribers though. That's right, right. that's right. Right, whether or not they get that particular that's electricity, right. that electron or whatever. Right. But they'll get it going, right? It's like 10%? Yeah, they get it right up. Bill, the, Bill credit, standard bill credit right now is 10% less than retail. And so that just gets, you know, you let's say you get $100 worth of electricity, you pay $90 for it, and it just gets credited to your bill. Is that a radius around this uh, farm that those, for the folks that apply for this? It's, how do you, it's really any, anyone in national grid territory, but. Yeah, yeah you can be any, anywhere in the, in the system and buy into it. Mm -hmm. Is this fed off of a cell phone substation? It's, I think, or is it Pompey? No, I think it is uh, for do good. No, I think it's, I gotta look. Is it hopefully not do good? Southwood, I think Southwood. it's Southwood. Is that I think it would be Southwood, yeah, yeah, down in Jamesville. Yep, yeah, do good. are asking some all the time. They need to So you said you're asking some, some tricky questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, so the big thing is that that whole idea of, uh, you know, uh, view shed and really is there an impact with the view shed is, you know, getting specific. That'll probably be the biggest question, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see poppy pines in all those houses. That drives me nuts, but, you know. Mm -hmm. just you can see them from your house? <laughs> if I get high enough. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the water tower, that's that's a way I can find home. You can see that from uh, yeah, I found that to be very helpful. Yeah, okay. manly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's beautiful, Dan. Yes, yes. Oh, my water comes from that tower. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's it's a beautiful wonderful thing. Thing. Yeah. Yes. So um yeah. We try to mount the uh the uh cell tower on the water uh tower. So maybe we can mount your solar panels on the water tower. <laughs> It'd be a need a bigger water tower, probably. Yeah, uh, and I don't want to be the one up there installing them. That's yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so I for me the big issues are just the, the screening on Sweet Road and. Um, do you do that study of the view shed? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty that, pretty standard practice. Yeah. Okay. So, um. Was there something magical about coming up with the four and a quarter megawatts? That is what National Grid said the line could handle. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, so we're we are paying for some upgrades to the utility infrastructure to accommodate that that four point two five megawatts, but more than that would have triggered significant cost <laughs> upgrades. So I think it was originally proposed at at five megawatts. Yeah, so. That's what I was wondering. That's my big problem with the view shed. Go to England, you don't see any telephone poles, you don't see yeah. any wires. 
Yeah, they, the they bury them, yeah. Yeah, that's what we need to do here. That's what makes Casanova so unique. It's the work on the there were wise enough to make sure all the wires when they came in to be, or came to be, went underground. Yeah, yeah. And for a lot of reasons, like when the wind blows up here, it, I mean, our power goes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you when you drive along Route 20, like from here to my house, if you look at the wire, I call them the Chinese hand, hand, uh, handcuffs. But those things where they put the wires back together, there's got to be 50 between here and my house. Yeah. And each one of those represents a power outage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. From the wind. Quick connects. Yeah, the quick connects. That's what they're called. And and that's because of the wind. Yeah. So based on that four and a quarter megawatts. Um, and having and you contributing something to upgrade the infrastructure mm -hmm. is it safe to say that uh, there's not much more that could be put on Southwood substation at this point in time? Yeah, I would have to look at the hosting capacity map, but it's certainly mm -hmm. limited. Like, like, like. So it's the substation, not the wire. It's it's both. So okay. one, it has to be a, a three phase line, and there's only a few segments in town that, that are three phase and then the voltage of the three phase line dictates how much capacity generally they can take so they run anywhere distribution lines run anywhere from like 4.8 kilovolts maybe up to 34.5 kilovolts most of them 13.2 kilovolts and lower and so the, that voltage is higher can handle more capacity but i think you're, you're typically limited to about 10 megawatts on a feeder segment and then you're right the substation is the last Sort of checkpoint in there and they can be accommodating feeds from adjacent towns and it's that cumulative capacity that and the transformer banks and how all the components there are rated that dictate how much that substation can handle without triggering like a rebuild or just you know, yeah i mean that. they're all designed for power to go in one direction <laughs> yeah it's got to go the other way so yes it's got to be pretty tricky and that also well, answers the question about building one across the street right right yeah What's the distance from? Or expanding on the site. You know, right, or expanding like, on the site, yeah. The tallest antenna. What's that, sir? Because they're just south of the antennas. Right. So you're the thousand foot one. I'm just wondering how far distance from the base of that one, the tallest tower up there. That's up north there. of the array? South. No, the array would be south of the top. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly. Um, and what I got it right. Now. Put impact for data. Just making sure it's beyond a thousand feet that it fell for some stupid reason. If the tower fell and hit the solar panels, and yeah, we're all beyond. Really... We're beyond the fall zone, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Have, have to check. Up it's, on Sevier Road. Oh heck yeah! Hopefully it won't fall. No. That but no, be, it's, we're way, it'll never hit, it'll, it'll have to hit and roll over a couple times to get to the, get to that area. Let's get pretty windy up there. Or do some type of like, yeah, we have to vault springboard. Paper toss. Paper toss. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then on the infrastructure, yeah. part of it too is um, how far away from the substation you are. Sure. Right, because as you get farther away, the, you're going to trigger other upgrades on components that are, that are intended to protect the grid and allow for bi-directional flow, like you mentioned, and you know, the voltage can drop. So there's, you see all kinds of issues the farther you get away. So right, the closer is better. As I understand it, I'm not a utility engineer, but that's kind of the, basic the understanding. The town board will handle the economics of all this as far as, mm -hmm. and all the taxes and yeah, that's not us. So when it comes back to us, we'll talk about the screening and all that, I guess, right? So we'll talk about the screening and all that when it comes back to us. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is the view shed simulations. Um, you know, obviously right next to it on Sweet Road, but okay, go across and, and look back and see what possibly could be seen. Yeah, and that's that's right. That's one of those things where you can go out and drive. The site. We can also, as I said, provide the, the view shed study so you can perhaps pick out some points where you'd like to see simulation. Yeah. Because I think most people think of view shed, they just say it. They don't, you know, like specifically who's going to see it. Well, 
or there's a view from the road or something they're trying to preserve. Right, like right. Lysander's put a five or thousand, you know, five hundred foot view shed along three seventy parts of the town. Yeah, it, uh, nothing could be built on it. So, except what, and that's where they grow a lot of strawberries too. By the way, thank God, some still growing strawberries. <laughs> You don't get real tall. You probably grow one of the taller better trees. Here. Good idea. Strawberries. Sand your soil. <laughs> there you go. I always want to grow strawberries. It'll deal with the pollinators, and yeah, it, it would work. It, it would. They would coexist. I don't think it can be you pick though. <laughs> It'll work. I'll have to figure that. I have to work on. That'd be too much shading. <laughs> yeah, they like their sun. Yeah. Anyway, I'm good. Do we have to send something to the board now. Well. Well, I'm kind of curious where attorney went. Right. Right. We're about to be given an opportunity to talk for an opportunity. You should some more. Is it is hearing, but it's not a public hearing, right? But we can listen to the public, right? We listen to the landowner, so yeah. why not listen to everybody? Say your name. Stanley Norman, Sevier Road, seventy-one fifty-four Sevier Road. Um, I don't know, Renee, if I say something that's wrong, maybe she can back me up on this. Or, um, this solar overlay law pretty well spells out what needs to be done. And I don't know, I mean, I was part of it. The town board wrote it, and there were a lot of concerns that were brought to the town board. And I think a lot of your concerns are addressed in this solar overlay law. So maybe before you go any further, take a look at what the law says. And I don't know what stage we are in terms of tier three, but when you talk about a concept site plan, I mean, it gives you specific things that you need to be. Right, and we'll do that when, we're doing some of that tonight, but that'll come back from the board, it'll come back to us. Just, um, we'll do the more detailed site plan when it comes back. I mean, because there's a lot of stuff in terms of concerns, and then your view shed, there are specific mm -hmm. parameters that have to be met. Um, setback, I mean, using 50% of usable land is where that is. So, my concerns are some of those as they were when we wrote the law. Um, one of the things you even view, it even talks about the specific in terms of bond, cash bond. I know uh, that was a question tonight. Uh, the, I mean, the deposit that it talks about, I mean, it spells it all right here. Um, and what they're looking for in terms of what the law was written. I guess my concern is, is all this being addressed? Do you guys have that information? Do you have the information that you're supposed to be getting? Uh, I'm also on the ECC committee. When does it come to us? Or during the actual site plan. During the actual site plan for review. Mm -hmm. I mean, my understanding was when an, app, an initial application came in, you were supposed to be notified, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't. Letter K, uh, referral to Environmental Conservation Commission upon receipt of an overlay district application. So this is the concept site plan. This isn't the actual overlay application. That's when it goes to the town board. If it gets an affirmative recommendation from us from the concept site plan, it goes to the town board as an application for a solar overlay zone. At that point is when you would also, the ECC would get that. Okay, so I mean, we're just all preliminary stuff right now. Is yep. Yes, just oh, absolutely. Just, yep. just, okay. I mean, my understanding is gotta get the okay from the town board or we correct. get before we're formally when engaged. Yeah, correct. Once looking for the right word, basically, Jamie, when we're comfortable that we have enough info that we can make a recommendation, a recommendation, either yay or nay, mm -hmm. to send in a letter format to the town board. If we say yay, then the applicant can fill out the application, mm -hmm. pay the fees, and so on, and then it's all in the town board's hands of do we approve an overlay zone for solar tier three? If it goes through and they're approved on that, then it comes back with another application to us for the official site plan review. And, and by the way, the recommendation doesn't have to be, 
we, we absolutely think this should go there. The re a recommendation can be um, more vague, like we, we're concerned about this. We would like to make sure that the board considers this very carefully. Um, we don't have any concerns about X, you know, just all these things that are being discussed. So it, it's um, a recommendation is, a, is whatever this board wants it to look like as planners because so the, the town board is like listen these people are the planners they see planning board applications they see what's happening in the town and planning and this is therefore delegated as a recommendation to this board and i think it's also the town board wanting more eyes on it mm -hmm. and then they're the ones who ultimately make this legislation and and will be looking at everything with the fine tooth comb then it comes back to this board for more fine tooth comb. <laughs> right. You know, That's when we really get into the detail is when mm -hmm. it comes back to us about the specific type of screening and setbacks. Sure. sure. And I think in this, in you know, it's like if if all of a sudden, you know, like it's in a valley and all there's millions of houses looking down on it or, you know, and it's such a view shed, you might say, there's nothing that could ever screen this. Mm -hmm. We just don't even think this will ever work. But if it's, a, yeah, probably can be screened. It probably needs to be set back further or things like that. That would all be in the recommendation. Well, it's like the study he's talking about of view shed it hasn't been done yet. So we really can't comment on it, except to say to the board, that should be done before Maybe mm -hmm. it comes well, back to us. Well, it's part of it's part of what's required, right, to be done. I guess is, is yeah. And so there is no formal application, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. No. Okay. All those things have to be done to meet it before it even comes back to us, right? Yeah. Do you think without a view shed analysis, we're in a position to make a recommendation? Well, I think you can make the recommendation and just put like we do with anything is that the caveat is we, we need a view shed analysis done. Yeah. I mean, we just talked about it here briefly about, you know, where can you see it and just that's something like you're not going to know it unless you can do the actual analysis. So you put that in the recommendation like Jamie's saying is. Well, right. We're sharing with the applicant what our concerns are. Right. The applicant and the landowner are going to know the property better than we do right and so they can hear what we're saying if yep. they think they can satisfy our concerns then they could probably feel comfortable doing that study right right and if they know that there's no way they're going to screen it then they're found it's all right or you know it's just not going to go anywhere. or if you aren't going to make a recommendation to the town if you're going to say we don't think this overlay district should be Created for this project, then we would also know that there are significant headwinds to even having the project considered. Right. <clears throat> and that's you know that's really all we're asking is for you, yep. you town board, to consider the project and evaluate its merits. Mm -hmm. I think the concept and the idea is a plus. Um, just alleviate that it it fits within the master plan of the town on that. And I think the biggest thing coming back on it's view shed that it's, you know, we've all driven up and down Sweet Road and, you know, you did a fantastic job clearing the, the land, <laughs> and, and, you know, got a lot of time, um, you know, but it, it just think of like some cell towers and I'll, I'll say like the last one down in Indian Hill, you know, we went round and round and round. And honestly, when you go down Poppy Center Road, can't even see you it. can't see yeah. it. You know, and or Indian Hill. Yeah. It, no. They left all the vegetation there. You know, when you get back and really look for it, then in the you winter, see, when the leaves are down, you can find it. You but can it's find not it yet. Easier, but you don't see it driving down the road. We need cell phones. We need yeah. cell towers. So we yeah. have to do the best we can do to, you know, mitigate, well, to well, mitigate we, we it. We need this but, too. We need this too. We need clean energy. Yeah. To, to, to charge your cell phone. Well, and there will be clean energy. It's, you know, Town of Clay's doing a wonderful job. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> we all got to do our part. Yeah, that, was a, that was a jab. <laughs> so, uh, and that's the problem with doing a master plan is when we were putting the master plan together, we were not thinking about solar farms. <clears throat> we just the technology. No, but, it does, but it does address renewable energy. Yeah, so, it's right. Renewable energy. Right. But not specific to a 20 acre 
Yes. You know, we didn't think about it back then. I had that in my mind. You're anyway, special. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so what's our next step? We we have to formulate a letter, Sue, to send to the town or essentially. Um, what's the best? Yeah this, is, yeah, this is our, our first um, you know, I go. I'm doing this. I, I would say that if we can, um, and we have the recording, we have we do. the minutes. minutes, we can go back and get a summarization. Who's we? So, all right, so <laughs> let's, let's try this. Let's, let's try this. Let's, again, it's the first time we've done this. Mary Beth's going to put together minutes. This can be a tough one, right? Hang on. Um, Welcome aboard. <laughs> and again, as I was saying, just, just do some bullet points. When she gets that, then I think a lot of us have stuff in our head. And then we'll, Sue so and I can try to put something, Steve, together, what we think are the bullet points. I will send it, attorney client privileged. We never do a reply all. Everybody puts in their comments, get a document. We may or may not be ready for a recommendation at the next meeting. It might be a further discussion. I don't want to rush this process mm -hmm. um, again I'd because like, it's the first time we're doing it. And I'd like Carl's input also, yes, of course. <clears throat> yeah, this is a template for who knows, maybe another. So, one. what do you think, Sue? Do, does that sound like a good? That's what I was thinking. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and, 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 and discuss it at the next meeting. Probably discuss, yeah. Then yeah. We, you know we'll we'll try to circulate something. We'll discuss it. May or may not be ready for a resolution at that point, but I'm thinking probably not. Um, yeah. But we would. You have haven't bought the panels yet, have you? Because we're cutting into that 35 years. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the, the converse side of that also is that you've heard you know some of the concerns that you can go out and maybe bring something new to us. Next month, too. Okay. Anything to add, Roy? Um, no, I guess not. Uh, this, uh, I've been trying to find this on the map here. It isn't all, all agricultural land, is it? I mean, it's not all land that's being farmed. <laughs> right. A lot of it is forest. Yeah. Your road. Yeah. The tower. <clears throat> So like, uh, oh, okay. So what? So the, the panels in here, and then one. So this, Veronica. Is there a way to? Let me show you the one we're going to get into one of our emails to pull up these notes. Nice guy. Okay. This is this. Okay. Yeah. It's the shed. If you could put the document and um, and then you have, you have Google Drive. Okay. Where do you so put your documents? Screened off like this. Because remember, we had the icon where I could put those documents on here. We sent everybody an email. Resend somebody the files. Yeah. 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 There is a pretty good buffer. I think it's a lot Those companies yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, did they ever do anything about the really not the pine trees? I don't think so. I mean, you know, I drive down Indian Hill. I mean, I have a lot this time I brought this in. If you have a car accident, if you don't stop, we don't have a doubt. Yeah, and again, view shit. Who's going to park the stuff and park it? And I'm going to buy corn at the. What's his name? But you know, you go to do it. 
That's all by itself. Yeah. It doesn't look like a tree. It looks like a pole. Yeah. Well, if you can get your file in here. Very much a But that was going to come down. <laughs> Whose actual <laughs> drive is that? I think it's. I think it's the one that goes to start. Yeah. Because yeah. Nikki's sent. It. Yeah. Nikki sent it out. Go up to. Because wasn't there an instruction to, somewhere? What is is this the Google Drive instruction? The accounting plan. Yeah, you okay. sign into your Gmail account. That being shown to everybody in the world. Right. Oh, because <laughs> I don't have um I don't have the Gmail account. Once it came to the password. Password to just like you give it. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Things. Everybody's seeing that. Be careful about well, that. Well, we'll work. Wait, it works. We'll work on technology yeah. and get it so next month. Yeah, because we get a color, good color overhead. On yep. the I think that the way it works <laughs> is that you have to email from your account to the account that goes with uh, uh, um, this account. So it can't. I don't think. Um, I can't do it. Account is there, but she would have had to send it to that account, which she can. And then once it's there, you can access. Can we just turn this over to our engineer? <laughs> Not that kind of engineer. <laughs> okay, so next month, hopefully, we can get it. Maybe would it help if we could get a good clean PDF from Word that we're just showing you right? We can use it on our own computers to just blow it up and. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You get the color and everything. Yeah, what would you like to see? Ambiguity. A good oh, clean PDF way. of just the uh, you right? the array. Yeah, that I mean that so that is that was sent as a, a full size color, I believe, um, in the original document. It's the one I got was color. Yeah. Okay. So I, but I, I could have, read I don't have a color printer. Well, I don't <laughs> think so. and it's I think it is the I didn't format large. No, but no. I need a printer. Yeah, this size. Yeah, that's it. Must be got some big print. Yeah, yeah, that's a much better quality. Than but I got a, you know, I don't have color. I got I got a big printer. I could print a full size. So, or like you're saying, if you just pull it up on a screen, you can zoom in and paint. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I would like to do. So just email us the actual one that you got. Because this is just this looks like it must be a scanned copy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, check. Yeah. So where's your home? I thought it was a hops farm. Uh, Dryden? Oh, it looks like yeah, not too far from here. So yeah. you know, this was a print of it. Actually, as far as uh, as far as losing the output of farmland, uh, <laughs> the grazing and whatever it works out to probably get more value than you do off a crap of alfalfa or something. Yeah. Like that. But it's the highest and best use. You're right. Yeah, the government. Uh, Manages to keep prices low enough that the best you could do on a lot of these crops and break even anyway. So I think probably you're a long ways above that. Make a deal. Break even on my corn crop. And what is the percentage yeah. of uh, agricultural land yeah. not yeah. being farmed right now in our town? And my property? We could go this, more. This goes back. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, just have nice. one lot. Go more. Yes, seventy. Joe's that same yeah. Yeah. Right. Seventy yeah. percent is not. I'm not being used other than hiking trails and uh, yeah. you know, for yeah. the woodlot. And then on continuing west, um, you know, I got into the uh, you know the USDA was helping me with because uh, I was doing wetlands because I wanted to build wetlands, so I built wetlands on ninety one, and uh, that 
thou feeds two pounds, and I farm, I, I graze, rotational grazing on that end, and I take a few cutting of hay there just to keep the animals there. That's, and that is, again, only 30%. Yeah, yeah. I got wetlands on the bottom. I got wetlands next to adjacent to nine, Route 91. And then uh, I, you know, I purchased uh, Jerry Racine's Christmas tree farm, cut the Christmas trees off, and then donated them to the scouts. And then um, let that let the cows in there and graze there. It's tillable. But how much is actually being tilled? What we tell her versus pasture. You see well, I can't tell the Route 91. I cannot tell that. Yeah. I'm just uh, not going to get my nation. You'll file it. Pardon? Flag without qualifying. No. Yeah. There's a bunch of comments. Yeah. comments. Okay. Yeah, they, Thank they you. And Facebook also. Uh -huh. yes. Okay. So you're going to have to bring down to jurisdiction. Pardon? Okay. So and how Steve, long have you been with do, this company, Gordon? Yeah. We do have. A series of comments and questions okay. from people watching that we'd like to address. Oh. So, are you asking for anyone specifically to address? Yeah, can you read those, Veronica, for us? How did my pass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mary Baum at 3405 Sweet Road. I disagree with Mr. Osakowski. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I will be able to see the solar farm from three, three out of four seasons when the leaves are off the trees. And the Stacer's home will be surrounded by it. They will certainly see it, and so will we. Where is that location? South. 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 <clears throat> Question for Gordon, what do you estimate the savings to be, to actually be on a customer's utility bill? Yeah, we, we touched on that earlier. The typical bill discount is 10%. 10, 10%. Do you have to spend with text, right? This is not no, they can hear us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how do they make sure the land is not contaminated by anything from solar panels? Who pays for cleanup from Helen Bailey? Well, and you know, like we, we talked about, the panels themselves are primarily aluminum, glass, and silicon. You know, they're hermetically sealed. You don't want water or anything getting in there. Into the panels themselves, the piles are steel and aluminum. So there's not a leaching or a contamination to speak of. And then there's the, the decommissioning security to help with removal and, and remediation, returning the site to original condition or better. Does the town have any say in what kind of solar panels get used? Currently, they don't know which ones they're going to put on there. Well, we we do we we I think we have specified with the utility anyway uh, what's called a bifacial module or crystalline silicon. So we are not using a thin film module. That's I think that's probably what the question is getting at. But I don't know about the the town specifying equipment. The thin film being uh, the technology where you're, you've got heavy metals. Right, that's like the cadmium tellurium, or I think they use there's copy, oh. copper indium. There's another mix. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any From Barbara Stacer, um, we are not aware of the proximity to our home, but based on the surveyor that was in our driveway, we would assume it's very close to our home. We were also advised that our address 
is what is being used as the site location. How can that be possible when my property is only three acres? Yeah, if we're using the wrong, the address is probably the historical site address. Um, that's close to the project site. I think, Phil, you were saying this was originally, you sold that. Yeah, parcel. So one, I, one piece, including that, and then I subdivided it and sold that to, to the Stacers. So I can look into that and, of course, correct the address. So that's there, the it, parcel it, ID that's, yeah. I guess, the... The tax ID would be it. Yeah. There's no... Usually, to get a number, you have to have a structure for that number, for that lot. Arbor Stacer also says you can see all the fields from Sweet Road. Yeah. Um, Helen Bailey, deer fence all the way around. Any hunting on the land? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't shoot at the Just solar don't shoot panels. at the solar panels. Don't shoot at the solar panels. <laughs> I imagine that happens. <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, I'm sure it does. Does it decommission the whole panel? Is it? If a panel gets shot, I mean, that panel would be out of operation. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> knock out the entire raid. <laughs> well, it's like Christmas lights, right? <laughs> it is not, fortunately, like Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask the board. And for that first comment, the woman to the south, you're more than welcome to come down. And if you can see her house, you let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, she may think she can see it. Good for her. I can't see her house. And I'm, I'm working at field all the time. Whether it leaves on or leaves off, you're more than welcome to come down. I'll even have a quad camp. It will go for a ride. You, you, you tell me if you can see. She is the least, in my opinion, is the least visible. But that'll come out yeah. in a uh, yeah. study we do, the right? yeah. shed study. Yeah. Um, Barbara Stacer asks, um, what is the cadence for regular maintenance of these panels? And when they become obsolete, who cleans them up and when? So regular service visits depend somewhat on company. We spec quarterly service visits and of course there's monitoring so you can see what's going on every minute of the day if uh, something came up a service crew would come out and, and examine it as far as you know, decommissioning as we said the system life and the contracted energy production is for 25 years at a minimum so that's that's what we anticipate and and then the decommissioning plan and associated security uh, covers the removal and remediation does the town have say in new panels if they are updated? Will they keep up the property unlike the tower property? So as far as equipment specification, not not that I've seen, that would that be very unusual. Um, it, it's on us to, of course, maintain the property and keep it operating well. But that's something we could consider conditioning too, is that you stay with these more uh, environmental friendly construction, constructed panels. Yeah, I would just ask. Not the heavy metals. I would just ask that if you're putting a condition like in there, that in there it's, it's allowing you to consider whatever. If in 20 years, there's a panel made out of um, carbon. You know, there's all sorts of materials that are, right now are just in their infancy, but in 20 years, could be a well, very wonderful material. And so, back so in front yeah. of the board or something before you go through it. Mm -hmm. So you just can't do it unilateral. You know, right. It, you could say something like panel replacement must be, or I would advocate for you to say panel replacement must be equivalent technology. At, we, you know, I'm not the lawyer here, but, but you know, but it, but it, it would need board the, approval to, to right, but it may increase your. Yeah. Uh, I think it should just look reclamation. The same. Yeah. In terms of the technology and how efficient it is and whatnot, that's on you. But just, you know, if you don't put pink panels up or something. Right, right. You know, if it looks basically the same, I mean, the panels are the same size. And, yeah. You know, they're usually dark. I, right. And I, I can't see why that should be a, an issue. What's the, uh, um, the intent as far as the 
the term of the lease that you're talking about going getting together on. What's the intent? Well, what's the term that you're talking about for the landowner? Yeah, I believe the base term is 26 years, and then of course there's options to extend if that's required okay. in the town. You know, that's based on the life of the account. panels? That is, and the contracted energy output. Yep. So, yeah. So that's related to your agreement with National Grid too? Right, with the way that they buy energy from, from the panels. Okay. Or from the systems. Mm -hmm. Are there any studies on the health impacts of nearby residents based on the comments about the toxic chemicals used to manufacture parts of these panels? And what are the impacts for those that have wells? Was, yeah, that was, that was not my my comment, but uh, who was that from? I I, I made Robert a comment Spencer. about some manufacturing, but these are not leaching chemicals. These aren't those right chemicals. right that they, they could go into a landfill. You know, right. and that was why why I asked it that way. Right, if it was left there. Well, and typically, too, I mean, unless the panel is gr physically ground up into a powder, um, it's not going to reach uh, chemicals into the water table or into the ground. Yeah, no. But it sounds to me as though if, if it was one of those pa pa panels with the heavy metals that you were talking about, that could be a problem. Only after it's ground up into a pulp and put on the ground, but in their right. condition. I mean, there's heavy metals in many of the things we use every day. The cars we drive, the watches we wear, the cell phones we use all have heavy metals. And unless you grind them up and let them leach into the ground, they're not having any kind of an impact on, on the environment. So right. just in its normal state, it's not going to leach. Okay. Right. I don't know that. Something, anything significant. In fact, to put something in a landfill, you have to do a test of that chemical called a TCLP, a Toxic Chemical Leachate Procedure, which simulates what happens in a landfill. And you have to submit that information to the landfill before the landfill allows you to dispose of that particular chemical. So, so you can't envision any solar panel that wouldn't be accepted into a landfill. Oh yeah, the the, uh, the heavy metals. The heavy metal ones would be a difficult one to get into a landfill unless you bound up that, you know, chemically altered it some somehow. I mean, we put lead in landfills, but we chemically alter the lead. We add um, a binder to it, like trisodium phosphate or something, and bind the lead up so it doesn't leach. Right. And then we do that test to determine whether or not it will leach out in a landfill. And all of our landfills are secure anyway. We collect the leachate and treat it so we'd know um, whether or not it was a problem. So it doesn't get into the groundwater anymore. Right. But I think the more thing was the panel sitting there in their operating state. state. No, no. To yeah. potentially contaminate water. And it's, it's basically glass and aluminum. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And the rain just rolls off it and they're designed so they don't break with hail and hurricanes and wind and uh yeah. things like that yeah they don't want them to break so they're designed to be tough yeah actually my panels on my roof uh when they've had to do service on them they climb on them they walk on them no problem yeah they're uh they're pretty pretty solid um chris carrick says, given the topography of the area, the planning board should select locations from multiple locations at varying elevations and distances, not just from the road adjacent to the project site. Yeah, I mean, to answer that question, it is not the role of the board to choose the location. It's to determine whether the location is appropriate when it's been chosen by the applicant. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I, I apologize. Good. <laughs> and, and the view, so view shed simulation is typically, I think, like a mile to five miles. It's a pretty wide radius where you're, where you're looking at where the panels or the system might be visible from. Yeah. I mean, that we've talked a lot about this view shed analysis. And, and if this board thinks that it's inappropriate to have that before this board makes a recommendation, then, then I, 
you know, I think that's within your purview. Well, if, if, if we send it to the board, telling the board that we believe that needs to be done before it comes back to us, would that not speed the process? Well, they have to do it anyway. Right. Yeah, they have to do it anyway. Right. They, ha they have to do it anyway, but, but we can't say, no, they can't build it there. We don't have that authority. No, but you can recommend against it you or can. for it. Based right. upon these analysis. And then those studies aren't, of course, cheap. We're bringing in mm -hmm. experts that mm -hmm. are spending a lot of time and computer power to do these mm -hmm. modeling simulations. And so we, you know, then our, our hope is that we would at least have confidence that the town is going to look at it, is going to consider it, right? And that's what this, this I mean, this overlay recommendation is just saying you can look at it. Or not even that. Like we, the planning board saying, you can be free to create an overlay district and start the study process. But um, we're hesitant to just you know put out the ten thousand dollars or more for this simulation. Let's say um, for the board then to come back and be like, you know, we don't want the town to recommend it, or we're, or we're the planning board is not going to recommend the overlay district. Well, so, I, Jamie, this is supposed to be conceptual. This. Right. No, well, I, I just. I, yeah. you know, so I when we get into this. asking for too much information, it gets a little bit beyond conceptual, doesn't it? I mean, conceptual is usually. Uh, I, I yes. like. I like the idea of Jamie's point and saying that it's conceptual would be like uh, you know, much more, a little more clarity. Well, I think the viewshed is the big issue, and we That's need we need to be on. able to evaluate that in order to be able to make a reasonable recommendation. I mean, if it's, if it can be, if the view shed issues can be dealt with, um, then it's a pretty easy call, but if they can't, then um, the only way we're going to know that is by looking at a view shed analysis. Um, seems to be the point it keeps coming up is the view shed and sure and it is part of the permitting process to do that view shed analysis it's correct it's not part of the conceptual process <clears throat> it's, it's got to be part of are we even going to put an overlay here which would be town board which is going to go on our recommendation which so may or may not i mean they can do whatever they want again i think that it's up to this point to decide. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, do, you, do you send it off and say, say, we're concerned about the view shed? We've heard this, that, and the other thing about the view shed. You know, you, we're I, not going to. Yeah. I mean, I think I could put myself, well, I'll try to put myself in your shoes and say that if I know that's a problem, if I can overcome that, then the $10,000, I have more confidence to go forward because I'm sure it's going to cost you, you know, a lot more than that. But sure. To me, it would be like a money well spent. Yeah, it's just you know, like we've like I, like we've spoken about already. This is a conceptual layout, and if we're doing one visual simulation, we'd like it to be on a layout that we're pretty confident of. Well, that, at this point, it is. But we may. Yeah, but we that, but, that but the problem. Oh, sure. The problem with with I understand what you're saying. But the problem is, if we go and like, yeah, we have some problems with the view and so forth. Even when you get like, when are you saying when you get to the actual application for the overlay you're going to have an actual this is what we're going to do because if you don't then there's no view shed analysis that's ever going right. to work well no we were going to we would submit the view shed analysis like we've already heard some comments from mm -hmm. john about wetlands for example and um, you know moving stuff into the trees and you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen before we can just we know whether or not we can do that like to before we can move stuff into the forested area for example we would need to get field biologists out there again to establish if it's wetlands or where the wetlands are to know where we can adjust the design i mean there's been some sentiment that we need to push it farther back from from sweet road and i think it would be useful to have a little more understanding of what is likely to be a good layout before committing to visual simulations just to know that we actually have a path forward before committing to visual simulations. So, so when do you presume that you would do that visual stimulation after they say this is a good place for the um, overlay? Because that does, does not make sense. Does the overlay go over the entire parcel? 
or only uh, it, what's delineated within it does not have to be on the entire parcel just be the, whatever the acres or whatever yeah. Yeah. That's the whole parcel. Have, it would sometimes have the whole parcel. parameters. I have the same the whole parcel. I so, don't. I guess point of clarity because if it's over nice. the whole parcel, you'd be free to take the suggestions and move it per se as you go. But the view shed is okay. Can you see this parcel from Lafayette? And, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. and then they mm -hmm. That alone might eliminate any idea of going into the woods. So, no, it's true. Jamie, just to clarify, were you saying it is the whole parcel? Or I do not believe it is the whole parcel. I, I don't think it, it would go over an entire parcel. That's And that's not what we proposed. Yeah. Yeah. Just that acres yeah. that they right. need, the 21 so, so, acres or whatever. Right. With, with some buffer yeah, around it. Yeah. To, uh, I really think it'd be a good idea to do this to be shut myself. So we're well, going to get. Let's let's do this. I mean, we do have again. Sorry, you're the guinea pig, but you are. Um, and you know, let's do what we said we're going to do. Let's revisit it and then revisit the concerns and see if we think that what you what what this board might be comfortable making a recommendation upon. But I certainly do not think the board is going to do an overlay without be shut in access. So you're saying we 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 go to the board and or to the board in our discussion and say we can't make a dear board we cannot make a decision right now without an analysis. Well, I think it's it's more involved than that. I, I, I think it, that might be just one of the factors. Like, right. Here's our recommendation. You need to get a view shed analysis. Here's where here's where, where the concerns are. You put that on here's the board. Where, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Or. Or Dan's saying, no, let's get an issue analysis so we can make a better recommendation to the board. So this is a this is a question. But I think if you said you fit analysis in front of the board could give them helpful information as far as saying where maybe the array might need to be tweaked or where they would like to see adjustments made. But isn't that our role is to where it should be tweaked, not the board's, because we're the, we do the site plan. There's a bunch of different, there's two different things going on here. If this right. is yeah. straight up, again, I'm going to an extreme. Right. If, if, and maybe sometimes you don't need it, even an analysis, like I'm so practical. I know if I'm standing on this hill, this is going to be set, you know, there's 200 houses and everyone's going to see it and they're going to hate it and therefore go away, okay? <laughs> Or then there's, you know, the other end, like there's probably a chance that nobody's ever going to see it anytime, anywhere. You don't need a view shed analysis. This seems somewhere in between, which is. Why do you say it's in between? We've only had one person mention the view well, shed analysis. I, well, view is the issue, right? People have talked about it throughout the night. Right, but most people, what I heard throughout the night, other than that one person, was that you can't see it from anywhere. Okay. So that's I mean, I everybody needs to go up there themselves and figure that out. Right. Is that what well, we do? Is that is that what we that's do? That's certainly one thing to do. Or right. You get but the analysis. You need it I mean, more than or just driving down the street. But that's how we do it. With we've taken field but, trips for many. Uh, of, of the yeah, things that we've had in front of us. And, uh, Look at where someone's going to build a house or, uh -huh. you know. Well, I'm not going to rely solely on the view simulation analysis, but I think I, I, I want one at some point. Hey, and I, well, and I agree. I agree. I, I think we have to have one, but when when do we have to have that? Because now it sounds like we're doing site plan review. Well, that's see, the thing. I, I think, think, I think I, see, this is where I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. You shut analysis does not come during site plan review. It's got to either come now, or it's got to come before the town board puts the overlay in because that is critical to, to the overlay. But you overlay. can't really right. do the overlay but, until we have a chance to tweak this whole thing because we may want to put it in the woods and then that overlay is going to have to include that piece. And there you have it. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the right. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, we have a question back here from, from the order, supervisor. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm just looking at our local law, and it looks like the visual assessment does not occur until site plan review. Right. That's the way it reads, page 12. Well, so I'm confused as, and I think 
I told Pivot that they would be the guinea pigs here for yep. our process because it is a three step process, but I'm just confused as to if, if you decide that you don't want to do that at this level, then you're, you, I'm getting the discussion sounds like you're expecting the town board to do it at their level, but I'm not sure that's where it's supposed to be done. But, but it, it, it's to be done at our level, but the next time we see it. Step three. Yes. Right. That, so, so I'm just, it, so what, it sounds like what Jamie is saying is that um, it might be important for the recommendation. For the recommendation. So I'm confused because that's yeah. not how our local law is. Well, not. and maybe it's um, this this whole view shed analysis <laughs> is is a very formal thing, right? But there's the thing about the view, you know, how, how else do we evaluate it? Because the thing that the board that we're recommending is this is a great spot for solar. Right, but what Renee happen? is saying, Renee is saying, if I'm the applicant and I've read our mm -hmm. our um, regulations, then I'm going to say, no, I don't have to do that because the regulations state that I do that when it gets to site plan review. Then we get into a legal issue because well, we've asked them to. I don't think so. This is all a suggestion. One, it's step three. Right. But if, if you're doing an overlay, and the overlay is only going to include the panels themselves. You know, I think you're going to want to know from us right. where those panels are going to go. Right. And then you put the overlay on those panels. But yeah, that's maybe the the on the acreage. Yes. That's my concern as far as if the overlay truly is just the, the piece of property that the solar farm's on is right. he could come before the planning board and we could want to tweak, um, move it back further, sure. bring the panels out more to the north. Sure. So, and if the if the town board is approving an overlay, they're approving an overlay that could change right. during the plan during the planning board review. I think well, we have I, to keep in mind, and correct yeah, me if I'm wrong. This is a fluid process mm -hmm. because it can be. I I mean, we have the local law to guide us, but when we were considering it, we, I mean, we took into consideration a lot of concerns. When we tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it, and tweaked it <laughs> until we felt like we had everybody's concerns on in balance. But I still think what Tim was saying at our town board meetings was that this this is not set in stone. If we feel like there is a different, like we we actually start to do this process and there is a different way we want to do it, we can fix it. We don't it's, so don't feel like we're yeah. I I want this to be the right process, mm -hmm. not one that we're just going to follow the book on. So if it's not working, we can... Right, because I think we missed that in, in our local law is that we should have put that as one of the caveats is that when you come for this conceptual, you should bring in a, a uh, view shed analysis. If you fall in the view shed area, you know. Right, if you fall in the yeah. view shed area, we should get an analysis. I, I, I read the overlay district you're just saying... That it's your your this process is just saying you know the project's worth considering. You're not giving it your blessing, of course, because there's not any of the detailed Agreed. analysis done. But you're just saying it has the potential to be a good site. So you know, it warrants right. the value. Is, when the when issue site plan comes uh, back to us, though, when it comes back to us, we don't have the authority in this board to say no. You can't you can't do it. Yeah. We don't have that authority. Correct. Once it comes back to us for site plan review, we can tell you to pay it green or make the trees taller or use deciduous or whatever, but we can't say, no, you can't have your solar farm. We don't have that authority. So that's why when it comes back to us, it really, we're just going to be tweaking a few things. Correct. And right. I think at this point, knowing through the master plan that the location is within the view, the view sheds corridor, I think legitimately it's a question that needs to be answered that Obviously, there's something about that view that it's delineated on that map. So, how is that solar going to affect that view? So, here's my question to you, Jamie. Uh -huh. Do we tell the board that's our recommendation that the applicant put a view shed analysis together, or do we tell the applicant he's got to do it before we recommend it to the board? This board decides that. We decide that. Yeah, the, re the recommendation. 
is as, as, as detailed or as limited as you care for it to be. It might be, hey, we looked at view shed. We looked at wetlands. We looked at... Um, so we have the authority raising. to tell them to go spend the $10,000 or whatever it is to do the view shed analysis and he comes back to us before we even send a letter to the board. I do believe that you do have that authority. Okay. Yes. But okay. he's got the right to say no. And it may or... Uh, absolutely. And we, absolutely. And we have a... Yeah. And, yes. and then the recommendation is unless this guy does a view shed analysis, we recommend no, or again, I, and I, I hope, wait, and I, it's the third time I've said this. Right now we know this is in a view shed area, right? Yeah. There's some that we know it's, again, there's solar, because I've, I've done it in other towns where it's like, it does not belong here. It's literally right next door to hundreds of people and everybody's come out and it's gonna bother them and they have million dollar houses. Or you've got, Absolutely nobody can see this, never will. And then you got something in between. Yes. With the idea that this is in a, a view shed that's been identified, is there a higher level of scrutiny at this board at the recommendation level? Because so either you, you get it, or when it goes to the recommendation, our recommendation is going to be don't even think about doing this unless you get a view that shed analysis town board. So either way, it's before site plan review. So that, that's what we need to do tonight then is to-, to But we, we're gonna process to information. Right. We're gonna make decide probably next meeting whether we do it or not, I think. <clears throat> I mean, there's, we- But without it, without it, what can we get- Well, there might be more stuff that- Oh yeah, right. yeah, I understand. Right? There so are I mean, we should yeah. just put it all, try to put it all together yeah. on one. Okay. Uh, can I, and just as a, just so you have another option, I just, so did mine. <laughs> I know, so I I here too long. Long. So <laughs> I, I was sitting here without the overlay on local law language, but it allows the town board to request any additional information um, that they feel necessary to render a decision. Sure. But we're not so, the town board. It's not there yet. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you feel like you want to make a recommendation without doing that view shed analysis, but the recommendation would include the town board, you recommend that the town board require that. I mean, that could be part of it. I'm just throwing that, that is, out. That is what we said. You know what I'm saying? But, but, it's, but it doesn't work because if we tell the town board to require it, they require it, they do the overlay, it's got to come back to us. No. If they do the view set shed analysis, no, that, that's not for them to do. Well, that's really for us to do. Of course, it can well, be. It can be it can for be. them to do. We can put it in they the recommendation. They should delay the overlay until we, uh, you know, this overlay part is the one that's kind of the, but the you, apply the ointment. You're not determining the overlay district right now. You're just authorizing the town to consider to determine it. determine. Yeah. So that's what, I mean, that's what we're just asking oh, for the opportunity for the town to consider it. Well, that, that'll happen yeah. most likely, but, you know, I think part of the process to get there is to say, this is where we recommend the panels go. And this is where we recommend the overlay. You can't have the town, you can't, we can't say to the town, we need you to do an analysis of the overlay. That's our role. Our role is to look at what he does, the analysis, give it to us, we look at it. That's what our role is supposed to be is we do the site plan review. Again, this is our no, first time. No, 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 no. You're way down the line. Yeah. Not during the site yeah. plan I, review. I understand it, but no. you're asking You're asking the board. We recommend to the board. The board they is have the us. applicant do a view shed analysis and before the board looks they, at it. Before they even do the overlay. Who We're reviews saying, it? The town board. No, that's it's we're oh, we're supposed well, then, to be reviewing. And it's got to happen now. It, yeah, it, it, because <laughs> because that's what our role is. That's what we're supposed to be. The people that look at the site plan. The town board says, okay, we want to do something here. Planning board, we need you to look at it to make sure it looks right. So, by telling the town board to review the the view shed analysis, we've given our uh, rule to the town board, and I think that's wrong. I mean, that's so. So then we have to do it now. That's an opinion, you know. I, I, again, it, I like you yeah. say that. That was very nice. No, I, I'm not saying I, I. No, it's it's it is one one opinion, and and I I think we're back at again. Sorry, you're a guinea pig, but um, if if we go back into what Sue, what we said we were going to do. 
and I, you know, I know that's the chance way to go through, but to see what's really out there. And right. then at the end, we're like, you know what, you tick off all the boxes and this is perfectly fine, but we need to know about view or we're not going to yep. not recommending. Mm -hmm. So, so it would, it, it, we can that's kind give of that recommendation to the town, but it's going to come back to us first. In other words, we're going to, we're going to recommend to the town that these things have to be done. Yep. And, and let the town this board decide whether we get this right whether before it, we make our formal right before we make our formal the board says okay a yeah formal you know, recommendation right to the board so the first thing is is this isn't a two-step process but, yeah well <laughs> it's, it's once it one, leaves us it goes to so the, the town board right well then, then we got to make decision. it a two-step so so it has so we have to have that analysis before it goes to the board how else could we make a recommendation that is the point. The threshold <laughs> question. <laughs> now we're on the same page. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. you're going to need you're going to need this visual impact analysis at some point anyway. When you change this is, the plan, yeah. you tweak the plan. Yeah. It's not like you've got to do it all over again, right? You just no. you just look at maybe a couple of. Uh, spots how that's going to impact I didn't, I didn't the visual um based on the fact that you move the panels further north or oh, sure. so the needs to be a little generally the, the general slope of yeah. the hay field yeah. is <laughs> fairly level yeah. to eight percent three to eight percent it's when you go further back in into the woods it starts to get a little bit steeper right, right. am i correct on that i haven't been too far back in the woods but uh, as far as the site goes yeah the Yes, clear. Yeah, yeah. It, starts, it starts to decline. It goes down. Yep. Okay. So you've got the parcel. You do the view shed analysis from others looking where the more general slope is. And then, okay, oh, what if, if it started to go down a little bit because we asked it to, to go further from the road? But predominantly, you're going to be looking, you would prefer to have it on that more level site anyway. Sure. Sure. So I think if you do take the driver on, do your view shed analysis, it's going to help you in the long run. Right. But, but you're that's talking about a view shed analysis that's going to be a little bit bigger than just what we're seeing here. So if they've got to tweak it around a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. 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 I, I can't see how we go any further. No. But if I've come around. That's, what what would you typically put in a view shed analysis? Uh, initially, just where is the site visible? Yeah. Would you pick the location? Yes. Well, we would not do, in this case, the photorealistic simulations to start with. We, I think, if you're setting the, there's just, if you're setting the boundaries. You, we'd say this is where it's visible from, or whether. Basically, people are going to want to. What their concern is is you know I can look at I can see a nice hay field you know yeah. cornfield whatever and you know this Pompey all of a sudden wait a minute something you know something's different there yeah and it's going to be well maybe as tall as some corn and so on but still from a distance it's going to look different is there a glint the reflection does it catch back it that's what they're going to want to know what am I going to be seeing from five miles or two miles or I, right yeah. I'm sure if you shed analysis has a set of parameters that well standard. I don't know the answer to that <laughs> if you're looking at the structure height the relative surroundings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. variations in topography and modeling where it would be visible from so yeah. then you could say oh okay it's visible from right. over here on Pratt Falls Road or wherever it is and you can say I I I'm saying analysis, but like like it goes into it. Well, he again. said that yeah. he said he would hire professionals that do this, that know what is involved in a view shed analysis. You know that I mean. So he, you said that earlier that there are people that know what the parameters are. You say we want to put this here, do a view shed analysis. So they drive around and find the high spots and so on and so forth. Well, yeah, I mean it's typically just computer modeling because. We we have the topography. right, but they know where the high spots and the low spots are, and what what it looks like from those. Right, but but they they must have a. I mean, the other thing the is, list. and again, too, because this applicant's like, you know, it's going to be a lot of money. I still think we should first do what we said we we're going to do. I know it's an extra meeting, but then he would have a pretty good idea that maybe everything else is fine, and 
here's a couple concerns and but the main things that you okay but that, in other words you we're just doing that internally we're not sending that to the board we're just doing that here we're gonna have we're saying, saying, yeah. well, we are gonna have another, we'll have another okay another meeting. this is my take on it it is meeting ends tonight mm -hmm. Mary Beth will transcribe the book <laughs> <Take it three. laughs> we'll send out but Jamie myself mm -hmm. Mary Beth get to 